Okay, this is sort of everything grouped by brand. The first ones that stick out to me are all the Colourpops and I think most of these will have to go because I really do not use them very often. I do love the Ultra Satins uh, but I tend to use Colourpop stick lipsticks more. I do not really love their liquid formula. Ultra satins are fine. The glosses are okay, but glosses from most places are okay in my opinion. And there's nothing especially, you know, unique about the glosses from um, Colourpop. The ultra matte liquid lipsticks are just, to me, terrible, terribly dry, uh, very thick, very cakey. They usually dry down about two or three tones darker and more grey or brown than they appear in the tube, so you never know what kind of a shade you're gonna get once it's on your lips. And they're just, they're just one of the most uncomfortable formula that I've tried. So I kind of went nuts when they first came out and I bought a ton of colours. All the mattes are gonna go and um, I may probably throw out um, a lot of these settings and glosses as well. And I also do not like their metallics. So the stuff I'm gonna chuck is all gonna go in this old duffel bag that I'm not using. Okay. Now, Melted Matte from Too Faced. This is the Gingerbread Man uh, from the past Christmas collection and I am probably gonna hang on to this because I love the burnt orange colour and there aren't that many of them around. So this is going in the Keep pile. Um, actually, I just noticed that I have these Lancome Lip Creams and these were from way back before all these matte liquid lipsticks became such a huge thing and uh, they were limited edition maybe 2013, 2014 and they are beautiful but they are so old they have to go so this is going into the trash. Let me just look at my Stila's. I bought this uh, during Christmas sale last year so these are fairly new and I do like these small deluxe sizes because this means I can bring them around, I can use them up before they all dry out or go bad because seriously, how many of us finish the entire tube of liquid lipstick? So this is going in the heat pile. MAC Lip Mix. I'm not sure how many of you have tried these but I think you can find them in pro stores still. And uh, these came out around the time that we had um, OCC Lip Tars. Those were like OG liquid lipsticks, you know, they came in these squeeze tubes and these are so intensely pigmented. Uh, you can use them to mix with other lipsticks and all that and I used to have a black one. Um, I remember I got them at a Mac Pro store in New York and I love these. This scarlet shade, I think it's called Crimson, I'm keeping these because they are just fantastic for mixing into other stuff and they do last, they keep for quite a while, you keep them in a cool dark place. Now one that is really really old and that I love but I keep forgetting to use is um, Hourglass's first liquid lipstick. They came out with the, I think this is called the Opaque Rouge and Icon. And it's so beautiful, it's a deep dark red. But I never used this so I'm gonna put it in the maybe pile. Uh, but this is getting up there in terms of age so I probably will get rid of it. Now this 
is uh, something that I'm shocked to have so many of because I so seldom wear them, the Maybelline Superstay liquid lipsticks. Uh, this is a very love it or hate it formula for people, I find, because uh, it is a very strange texture. It goes on quite thick and a little bit tacky and then it dries and it stays tacky. So you will feel your lips sticking together for the next 20, sometimes 30 minutes. Uh, it does eventually dry down to a matte and um, dry finish. Your lips don't keep sticking together forever, but uh, uh, most people can't get past the first 30 minutes or so. Uh, I don't have a problem with the fact that it's sticky for the first 15 to 30 minutes. My problem with it is that it is such a pain to remove. So I love the colours, I love how long-lasting it is, and they are correct in that it is not drying at all. However, I don't like it to be such a challenge at the end of the day to try and remove these. Now why don't I just do a brand that I'm definitely keeping all of and that is my Armani uh, Lip Maestros. I love these lip creams. They aren't the most matte lip creams around but they are beautiful and I love how smooth and how comfortable they are. So this is definitely going to keep pile. This as well. I'm keeping beautiful red and beautiful texture. Now another brand that I will be keeping all of is my Burberry. These are the liquid lip velvets and I love every one of their shades. It's beautifully curated and the colours are just amazing. Definitely not getting rid of any of them. Now another line that I feel is extremely underrated. If you happen to like liquid lipsticks that do not set completely, that is the Ciate London liquid velvets. Now they have some really interesting colours and this is the one where I have a teal green. And yes, I will wear a teal green on my lips. It actually looks pretty nice. They do have some very cool colours. You have a really really dark shade, uh, magenta, I have a violet and I have a deep coral. These are super creamy and they do somewhat remind me of the uh, Armani Lip Maestros. So, you know, if you like that sort of a texture, you know, with the very suede-like, very creamy, uh, very comfortable feeling matte lipsticks that do not set, but are very, very opaque, then try the Ciate London Liquid Velvet. Now, the Tartus Lip Paints, um, I find these really comfortable as well, and I do quite like some of these shades, uh, but this one, I think this is called Namaste, I think this is just way too pale for me and I seldom touch it, so this is going in the maybe pile. Um, I may pass it to someone else who could love it more. And uh, for these two, mm, I do love this colour, but I feel that I would just wear the uh, dark shades that I have from the Shu Uemura um, Matte Supremes more. So this one I'm gonna keep and then the dark ones going in the maybe pile. I could keep these. I love the mini sizes. They're so handy and the colours are nice. Now the Huda Beauty um, liquid lipsticks, liquid mattes. Uh, are one of the few matte formulas that are on the more dry side but that I still like because they are lightweight enough, liquid enough, but still opaque. So when you apply them, you don't get this really thick, wrinkly, leathery look on your lips, which I hate. These do look relatively smooth on the lips and the colours are beautiful. So uh, I have, I think, a Bombshell and Icon and I like both these colours so I'm definitely keeping these. Now, Ofra. Now, I know Ofra's like this cult brand and there are lots of people who love their liquid lipstick and find them to be super comfortable. Strangely enough, I'm one of those that find the formula very drying. I find them really thick. Um, this to me is one of the traditional liquid lipstick formulas that uh, goes on thick. It sets very dry and very matte and then my lips look more wrinkly than they started out uh, 15 minutes before. All of these do set to a much deeper shade than they appear in the tube, which I really dislike. I don't like it when the colour changes so much. Uh, they go like a deep ashy grey. It's just not a love. Like for this, it looks so beautiful here, but uh, when I wear it, it just goes to this deep 
brown gray with a little bit of mauve instead of just mauve so yeah the ofras are gonna go i'm gonna put them in the maybe pile because um there are some people uh, around me who might want to try matte liquid lipsticks and it's a popular brand so maybe they will like this more than me another brand where i love how it looks even though it does feel a little bit on the dry side uh, the nars power matte liquid lips so i do have quite a number um i received some of these as pr and i also bought quite a big bunch of these myself because um these shades are just beautiful they are so on trend there is one that uh I featured in one of my uh, lipstick, dark lipstick videos and it's called London Calling and it's this grey, lavender brown, just so interesting looking. Um, they have very very on-trend colours, I mean it's NARS after all, so I am definitely keeping these because they are relatively new. Now Velvet Lip Glide from NARS, um, these were quite the rage when they came out. I saw so many rave reviews online from beauty vloggers on YouTube. And then when I tried it, I mean, it was nice, but I couldn't quite understand uh, why everyone is going crazy for these. They were very smooth, they're very comfortable to wear, the colours are beautiful, but one, they are not entirely opaque, like people were claiming they were. You kind of have to build up the colour depending on which shade you are wearing in order to make it opaque. And then after that, it goes all gloopy and it slides off because this is a creamy, slippery, almost gloss-like lacquer. It is not a velvet lip glide at all. It's more like a glossy lip glide. So I just feel, you know, in terms of marketing and the naming of this, um, they set up kind of false expectations for me with this one. Having said all that, it's not like I'm going to throw these away. I do enjoy using these as a, a very smooth, um, shiny lip cream. I do love them. And uh, I did get the entire set as PR, but I do still treasure these. I like a lot of the colours. Like I said, NARS gets their colours right. Now, these. The Urban Decay Vice Liquid Lipsticks. This is an easy one for me. I'm throwing everything out. I already threw out, I think, three other shades. Um, this is just a bad formula. You should know it, Urban Decay. This is a very, very bad formula. The metallics are not opaque at all. They go on sheer, they go on patchy, they are uneven looking, and then if you try and build it up, everything gets thick and cakey and wrinkly and just... Nah, no. Ugh. And they're so hard to remove as well. You know, I can understand the Maybellines being hard to remove. At least they wear smoothly, they are not drying. These you know, don't even have those benefits to balance out the bad points. So yeah, this is definitely going in the trash. I'm not even going to pass this to anyone else unless I hate them. Too Faced Melted Lipsticks. I am surprised I still have these because they are so old. These have to go. Uh, Marc Jacobs Lip Creams. This is the shade Slow Burn. This is a beautiful formula, beautiful texture, and a beautiful color. They have, I think, a whole series of very, very skin-flattering neutral shades, and I do love this a lot, and I just never remember to use it, so this is going in the keep pile. Now, Clara Cosmetics, uh, I think they're based in Australia, and this is their Kiss Proof Lipstick in the shade number 15, and it's a beautiful nude. Uh, but it's just one of those that is also, for me, slightly on the dry side. A little bit too dry for my dry lips, so uh, I'm probably going to put this in the maybe pile and pass it to someone else because I can't say it's bad, it's not a bad lipstick at all. It's just a little bit too dry for my own personal taste, so I don't reach for it. Oh my god, do you have any idea how old this is? This is a tube of OCC's Pretty Boy in the old OG packaging. I remember I used to love collecting lip tars. I had a huge drawer full of them. And then the thing about these is, um, it's a very simple formulation, just pigments and oil. And then what happens is you leave them lying around on their side for, you know, a couple of days and then all the pigments will settle to the bottom and then the next time you want to use it, you kind of have to shake it around, squeeze it a little, try and flip it here and there, and then you have to wait an hour before the pigments settle and mix up again so you can use it. These went rancid so quickly. I do not know if the formula now in the uh, doe foot tubes is exactly the same as the old ones, but it was a brilliant idea to have very highly pigmented lip creams like these that you can use to mix or do special effects makeup. It was ahead of the game, 
during that time, but I think nowadays just no reason to use these or keep it anymore. The same for the other melted lipsticks from Too Faced, which I forgot I had. Now, something else I'm definitely keeping are the Hera Sensual Lip Tints. Uh, there are 10 shades, I think. Yep. And I am keeping all of them because I like all the colours. I don't say that about a lot of ranges, but there are 10 shades in the collection. I like every single shade. I would wear every single shade. In fact, I have on different occasions. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram story, probably have seen me swatch quite a few of these. And uh, this is one of those lightweight gel creams. Um, that isn't matte. This is, it doesn't set all the way matte, but it's more like a satin finish and you get to control the amount of coverage you want from sort of semi-opaque to fully opaque depending how much you want to layer it. So I kind of like the fact that it looks shiny, it looks kind of lacquered and it's uh, pigmented, but then uh, it sets. You know, it's one of those gel formulas that sort of sets a little bit, so it actually lasts quite well. Much better than it seems like it would, given how creamy or glossy looking it is. Same with the Laneige Tattoo Lip Tints as well. Uh, I love how it goes on like a sheer powder mat, and then you can build up a little bit more where you want it to make really beautiful, gradient, cloudy, powdery looks. Uh, it's really hard to describe if you have not used this formula, and I know not everyone knows how to use it, not everyone likes it, but I happen to like this formula a lot, and I do like most of the shades. Uh, not every shade here is as easily wearable as all the shades in the sensual tint range are. So uh, like this powdery blue pink, it's like mm, not many people are going to be able to pull this off and I really need to work hard if I want to wear this. So now, Matte Finity Lip Rouges from Miraness. Now Miraness is quite a highly rated Aussie brand if I'm not wrong and I don't know why I haven't remembered to try these, so I'll put this in the maybe pile. The OGs, the grandmother of matte liquid lipsticks, Lime Crime. Now like them or dislike them, I have to say that they were a front runner and a game changer when it came to matte liquid lipsticks. Seriously, before Lime Crime threw out Red Velvet, liquid lipsticks came like this. You know, we remember, you know, Max Factor and Revlon and everyone had these, you know, double-ended liquid lipsticks. No one wore matte, non-transferring liquid lipsticks on their own because your lips would just be so dry. Uh, you would need this glossy lacquer to apply on top of the colour portion constantly. And I just didn't like the look. It was uncomfortable, it was troublesome, and it just didn't look nice. And then I remember the first time that they came out with Red Velvet liquid lipstick and my mind was totally blown. So, you know, controversy aside and, you know, their ups and downs as a brand, I do feel they were a front runner in terms of a lot of trendy makeup stuff. I do have to give them some props and respect for that. And they do have some bomb shades in their line. I bought all of these. I'm not sponsored by Lime Crime. I did purchase all these shades myself, so I am keeping them. It's my money. As for these, uh, they're going in the giveaway pile because uh, I know my mom does enjoy these sort of like a double-ended liquid lipsticks. She likes, you know, having a slightly smoother texture over her matte lips. So this is going to her. I never use this. Now another line that I am for sure keeping all off. I don't even need to ponder about which shades to keep and which to give away. Are the YSL Tatouage Coutures. This is hands down one of my favorite matte liquid lipstick formulas. Bar none. Almost nothing else feels like these. They are so lightweight. They are like a cross between the uh, Laneige Tattoo Lip Tints and a more traditional liquid lipstick. They have the lightweight texture, uh, similar to the Korean ones, but they also have the pigmentation level that we expect of Western brands. So in a sense, they combine the best of both worlds. Ah, the colors are just beautiful. You know, they're not the most adventurous, I have to say. You know, you're not gonna find, you know, crazy wacky colors like these very often in the YSL range, but what they have tends to be extremely flattering. And I know a lot of people do not like the fragrance um, in this formula. It has a very floral, uh, very strong fragrance in it, but you know, once you get past that, it's a very 
very beautiful formula and I'm keeping all of these. The other two I'm keeping are the ones from L'Oreal which I reviewed very recently. I do love the texture of this. They remind me a little bit of the Laneige as well as the YSL Tattoo Wash Coutures. A little bit. Uh, not as pigmented as the YSLs but the shade range is beautiful and I do love how light and how non-drying this feels on the lips so I'm keeping this. Now Wet n Wild. Hmm, these are the ones I'm not too sure about. I know some people love these, they find these very non-drying. Uh, for me, this is a little bit like Ofra again. I find them very thick, I find them very drying, I find that they set to a deeper uh, colour on my lips. So this is going in the maybe pile or the giveaway pile. One brand of liquid lipsticks which is very very underrated is Estee Lauder. I don't know why but I think uh, a lot of people, sometimes myself included, kind of think of this as um, an older brand. I know that sounds really really horrible but uh, I know they are trying pretty hard to uh, update their image and look a little bit younger and funkier with their new spokespeople. Uh, you have Violette, their new creative director, you have Kendall Jenner modeling for them. They do have a few textures, there's the uh, liquid mattes and there's a liquid vinyl. So the vinyls I'm giving away, I don't like the creamy ones. The mattes I will keep them. Bobbi Brown Art Stick uh, Liquid Lips. I love the colour of these, I really really do. But something in the formula for this uh, makes my lips peel and itch and sting. So um, given the fact that I'm slightly allergic to something in there and I react negatively to it, these are going into the giveaway pile. I'm sure someone else can love them. Something else that has a very very similar texture to the Bobbi Brown uh, Art Stick Liquid Lips are these Mamond uh, Creamy Tint Squeeze Lips. These come in this rubbery pen and you can squeeze the cream out. Pretty similar to the Bobbi Brown ones. And the texture and the pigmentation level is pretty similar as well. The problem I have with these is the same thing. They do make my lips feel slightly uncomfortable. I'm not sure what it is about these types of formulas, but the squeezy lip creams, nope, they do not work for me. So this, their colours are very fresh, very girly, very beautiful, and I'm sure someone else will love them. So I am putting these in the giveaway pile. Uh, the highlight lip tints I have are, I think, close to one and a half years old. They are not bad, they are not the best, and I do not love these colours because some of them are a little bit too pale and too pastel, and you'd have to be extremely pale to pull these off, and I'm not that pale, so um, they're a little bit too old for me to pass them to other people as well, so this is going in the trash. While we are on Mamond, they do have these um, matte liquid lipsticks that are more like traditional matte liquid lipsticks and I do like the formula of these quite a bit. The strange thing about these is they go on really smooth and they feel really nice and they sit really nice. They don't emphasize lines and they don't look overly dry but they stay like this for a certain number of hours and then after that they start to chip and peel and crack. I do not know what it is about the formula and why that is happening. I've tried both shades and it happens with both shades. I do love this particular color. This is number four, Cloudy Rose. If you're going to be wearing them for a short period of time, these are fantastic but if you're going to wear them the whole day then yeah, I'm not sure how I can make these better for you. So these are probably going in the trash pile. And the beautiful metallic tubes are their uh, lip tint velvets. So it's kind of like a satiny matte finish, but it leaves a stain, unlike the matte ones, the velvet ones that I just chucked. They are not a favourite either. Um, I have two of these. And I think this is going in the maybe pile because at least these don't crack and start chipping and flaking off in the middle of the day. So I'll give this to someone else. Now the lip tints from Korea that I will be keeping are the ones from Innisfree. These are their Vivid Cotton Inks and they are very very comfortable. Uh, they remind me a little bit again of the uh, Lip Maestros from Armani. So they're very comfortable, the colours are gorgeous and I do like this really really deep um, ox blood red. This is beautiful. So uh, I am keeping these. 
It did take quite a while for the Korean brands to jump on the matte liquid lipstick bandwagon but I'm pretty glad they did because uh, they tend to go with textures that are a little bit more lightweight and a little bit more silky and flattering than a lot of the western brands. So the factories that make the Korean formulas do tend to come up with a uh, slightly more sweet like I told you, a bit more of a powdery, uh, not totally thick formula. They still last but they are very thin, they go on like inks and then they set to this really really thin layer on the lips so it does not emphasize lines as badly as a lot of the western brands. So uh, I have quite a few of these because I received a set of the minis when the Matte Chic lip lacquers first launched. These are five of the star shades and I did receive a couple of these in PR and full size and I purchased a few more myself because I like the formula a lot. It is very light, it lasts the whole day, feels more comfortable than traditional liquid lipsticks, so definitely keeping these. Now, I do have a few items from YSL that I will be chucking because they are just getting too old. Look at these. These are the Baby Doll Kiss and Blush. It's a cream to powder texture, not ever fully powdery. Uh, it's sort of cream to matte. The shade range, I feel, is slightly limited because um, you have to be able to use this as a blush. So you're not going to get a deep oxblood red or brown that would kind of look a little bit weird. So a lot of these are very soft, very pastel, very girly shades. And while they look nice on the cheeks, I do not love uh, most of these on the lips. I mean, these two would just make me look so sick. They're nice but they are really old and formula separating a little bit so these will have to go. I'm not even gonna pass these to anyone even though they're YSL. Now, Dior's. Uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag with this because I like the formula a lot. I think um, it's really good that they decided to come up with very fashion forward colours. They have black, you know like this one is true black. I am actually probably gonna keep the black because um, because I don't have anything that I can use as a mixer for when I want to deepen or do special effects on the lips and this is a good formula so I might as well keep the black from Dior. Uh, the metallics I am a little bit more iffy about. I don't know how many people wear this kind of colour. This shade uh, is a beautiful sandy brown and this is called Jungle, I believe, 614 and it's a beautiful almost orangey brown, camel brown on the lips. It's a very unique colour and not always easy to pull off because of how sandy the colour is but it's so unique that I just have to keep it. Now one that I really am not sure of is Gerard Cosmetics. Uh, this is Hydromat in Serenity. It looks like a really beautiful nude. Uh, a warm nude. It's got peachy tones in it. But I don't love the formula and it seems to have dried out slightly and I didn't even get this too long ago so I'm not even gonna pass this to anyone. This is going in the trash. Now these I'm a little bit torn about. Uh, the Beauty Bakery liquid lipsticks. This for me is kind of like, you know, my thoughts on the Maybelline Superstays. They are beautiful, uh, they are not sticky, they go on matte, but one, they feel pretty dry on the lips and that is an understatement. And two, they are so hard to remove. I wore this on Instagram once and I love the colour. The only issue is that it was hell trying to remove this. That's why I'm kind of torn because I really like this brand, I really like the shades. They are going the maybe pile. I don't know, I don't like to kill my lips when I'm trying to remove my makeup. Now the Etude House Shine Chic Lip Lacquers. I probably should not have included these. They're more like lacquers or glossy tints than liquid lipsticks. Then again, they do set a little, so I guess I could consider them liquid lipsticks. And I do like every single colour. Uh, I did receive this in PR. I didn't purchase these, but I like them enough that I want to keep them. Okay, Rollover Reaction. Quite a well-known Indonesian brand and I really love supporting uh, local brands you know from around the region because you know they're coming up with some good stuff. And Rollover Reaction has a series of lip and cheek creams with a very nice very moussey texture. Now these unlike the YSL ones do set to a powdery texture so you don't have to worry about them feeling kind of 
greasy or creamy on the cheeks and not drying down, these will set. And when you put them on the lips, you know, they have this range of colours that is very brown toned. Uh, before Shu Uemura came out with their matte supremes that have a little bit of brown in every single shade, Rollover Reaction did it first. So every single shade is very skin flattering. It is mostly neutral. They have some deep browns and reddish tones, but all of them have very neutral brown undertones in them. So unfortunately, my set is kind of old because I think um, I first reviewed these maybe like two years ago. And while I love these, I think it is time for them to go and uh, I'll probably just have to repurchase new ones if I want to try them or review them again. Now MAC, <sighs> such a mixed bag because they came out with um, some of these original colours in the first batch I think a couple of years ago and they felt so horribly dry. I really did not like these when they first came out. They did come out with a second batch. First they came out with the um, Makeup Art Cosmetics uh, Kabuki Magic Collection and they had um, some of these shades in the new formula that was smoother, was more comfortable, it didn't crack so much, it didn't emphasize lines so much and the colors were just... Look at these colors, I mean they are so unique but they are still wearable so these three I loved and then after this they came out with um, a shade expansion they call it but to me the formulas definitely changed and they came up with really really fashion forward nudes there was a uh, teal green I believe which I did not get because I have another teal green from the Ciate collection already but I did get a couple of these beiges and then I really like this dark taupey brown called espresso this is called high drama these I really like the beiges and dark dark burgundy red so I am keeping these the very unique colors in the very smooth texture the deep red uh, performs okay so this is going in the maybe pile these were really dry and really cracked and didn't perform up to standard so these are going in the trash pile Another brand that's a little bit of a mixed bag are Pixie. I mean, they are affordable, they have a beautiful color range, and these are formulated with uh, plant extracts, so they are supposed to be conditioning for the lips. However, not every single shade performed exactly the same, and um, I found some of them would start to crack off, a little bit like the Mamond ones. Uh, they would set, and then after a while with movement and just very normal wear and tear, they would start to crack, and then some of it would start to chip and flake off. But not every single shade is like this, so I am not entirely sure what to make of the range right now because, I mean, if you were just to ask me based on colours, these are a straight up win. They are just so gorgeous. So I will probably keep a couple of the uh, neutral shades for myself and then the rest will go in a maybe pile to give away to someone else. Uh, the shade that I do like though is Evening Rose. Now this one is easy. This is my Chanel Rouge Allure Ink in 152. Uh, this is a deep crimson and it's the only Chanel lip ink that I own. I mean, I've looked and gone to swatch them quite a few times and I really like this formula. This is the one that's uh, a non-setting matte lip cream. So it feels very comfortable, it doesn't emphasize lines, my lips feel smooth the whole day. And this performs quite similarly to the Shu Uemura Matte Supremes, except it doesn't go on with um, a gel finish. This is slightly creamier and thicker, but it's very very comfortable and the colors are beautiful. I do wish they had a slightly bigger shade range though. Chanel is very very conservative. This shade is beautiful, 152, and I'm definitely keeping it. I mean, this is the only Chanel one that I have. Now, Inglot, um, these are a little bit old and you can see um, the formula is separating already. I think one of my most popular Tumblr posts was a picture of me wearing this super deep dark lip uh, with a very simple smoky eye and seems like everyone loved the look. But I seldom wear these. Um, they are a very dry formula as well, so uh, I can't wear these the whole day. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to chuck these because at this point they're a little bit old and if I really really love this shade so much, I'll, you just have to repurchase it. The thing is, I may not have to because there are other brands with similar colours like Sephora. Now Sephora's lip creams are one of the underrated 
liquid lipstick brands or lines around and they are so good now they have very fashion forward colors as well this is not far off from some of the taupe ashy browns that mac came out with well aside from some of these crazier colors which i know i'm never going to wear it's like a pale sand beige this is probably gonna get chucked simply because no one i'm passing it to is gonna wear this either nope no one's wearing this the black i'm not sure about because i'm already keeping the one from dior so i may not need one extra one you know what i'm just gonna throw this but the rest i really really like they are one of the more comfortable formulas around and i know a lot of people say they are very similar to the kat von d liquid lipsticks I don't actually think so. I find the Kat Von D's a little bit runnier. The Sephora lip creams are a little bit thicker, a bit more creamy feeling. These just feel like liquid lip inks. Um, closer to the NARS Power Mattes. Now, Makeup Forever has these squeezy lip paints. Um, Artist Acrylips that come like these. And these are actually surprisingly good. I know not a lot of people talk about these. Um, because they're not like, you know, traditional matte liquid lipsticks. They don't have, you know, very special texture when they go on. It's just a lip cream, not too different from what you'd get from an OCC lip tar. But the colours are just beautiful. Now, I do not, I have to admit, use uh, the magenta or the coral that often. I will put these in the maybe pile just to look at them again and decide if I want to give them away or maybe try using them again. But my favourite out of these is this really deep dark berry. It looks scary here but it's a really nice shade. So you see. And what is nice about this is you can shear it out and it becomes this berry stain. It's like you've been eating berries and you just have this slight stain on your lips. This is a very, very versatile shade and um, I'm definitely keeping this. These two will go in the maybe pile. Now Touch in Soul is a very, very interesting Korean brand that came to Sephora and Singapore for a little while but then it was very, very quickly discontinued because the products are so expensive and some of the textures are just a little bit too dramatic for the crowd here, I believe. I think I'm just gonna check this because, I mean, okay, if you have dark skin, Okay, this would look really, really good, I think. But most other skin tones, I feel this would not look good on. Isn't it a little bit dated to have very, very metallic lips? I don't know, well, I'm just gonna chuck this. Now, NYX. Um, I'm not a fan of the NYX liquid suites because uh, this is like... It's like a liquid to matte, but it's not fully matte and it doesn't fully set but it's not as comfortable or as creamy as the non-setting kind so I am not entirely sure what the point was to this range. The uh, lip lingeries do the traditional matte liquid lip look better than these and the soft matte lip creams uh, do the soft look much better than these two so these will go in the trash. Now for the soft matte lip creams though, I don't like every single colour so uh, I'm keeping the deep pink and the brown. This I featured in my dark winter lipstick uh, video and it is a very very beautiful colour. This is Berlin. I'm keeping Berlin and also Prague. Milan is pretty as well but then I feel like this is a colour that I would have been crazy about close to 10 years ago. You know, in the mid-2000s, you know, people were really into this sort of like soft Barbie-ish pinks and it's just a little bit dated now. I'm gonna put Milan in the maybe pile because someone else might like it more than me. So I think Seoul is going in the trash pile. Now, Camellia Cosmetics is a Malaysia-based brand that does uh, very skin flattering neutral uh, liquid lipsticks as well. They started out with a lineup of, of just three main shades and I swatched all of these. Uh, I do like these a lot because they are very comfortable. Compared to a lot of matte liquid lipsticks, these are much more conditioning than those. However, I have so many soft, warm, creamy, neutral matte lipsticks around that I seldom reach for these and they are getting a little bit up there in terms of age. I'm just gonna chuck these just because they're a little bit too old. But yeah, check out Camellia Cosmetics. These are very very nice liquid lipsticks. 
I bought this myself in this Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Lipstick and this is the shade 700 Be My Baby. Now it's a beautiful colour but I just didn't like the texture. It's one of those dry, moussey liquid lipsticks that feel slightly chalky. I'm sorry if you're a fan of these. I mean, this is just my personal preference and I don't happen to like the formula of these that much. So, it's still relatively new. I just bought this not too long ago. Lipland. Now, this is a pretty expensive brand and it was at, uh, available at Sephora for a little while but kind of disappeared because no one knew about the brand. They didn't do too much advertising and marketing and then, you know, just kind of came in quietly and then disappeared quietly as well. I received these two shades in PR and they're kind of beautiful. They're both metallic liquid lipsticks. One is plutonium, this is a metallic brown and then this is a wicked which is a deep red. So I'll be keeping these because um, as far as metallics go, I feel deep metallics are the ones that would work on the lips and I also like these as liquid eyeliner. Uh, not every brand is suited for use around the eye area, so you know, try it at your own risk. Uh, the Jeffree Star ones are definitely usable around the eyes. Um, Lip Land, I'm not 100% sure, but do remember that I'm bearing the risk of using these around my eyes myself, and I am not recommending it to anyone else. Um, I mean, test at your own risk. This is a really strange one. Um, it's a Dior lip cream and this came out during uh, Christmas in one of their limited edition collections. It's more like a soft lip cream and it doesn't set matte. That's it, it is very comfortable to wear so uh, I'm gonna keep this. Now, makeup Forever. I love a lot of their makeup and they have fantastic formulations for foundations and powders and concealers. But when it comes to liquid lipsticks, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. I do quite like um, their traditional ones in these doe foot tubes. Uh, the colours are nice. Uh, they do set uh, one or two shades deeper like most liquid lipsticks do. And they are a little on the thick side, but they are not horribly dry. Not the most moisturising, but not bad. These, I'm gonna keep them. They recently came out with the Artist Rouge inks. Sadly, um, I don't love these. I mean, I do not understand the reason for having these because, um, to be honest, they're not too different from these. I expected that this sort of liquid ink would be very, very weightless because, I mean, the recent trend has been for lip inks that have very, very little weight. They are very thin, they are very light, they are very high in pigmentation, so once they dry down, you get maximum payoff and colour on your lips, but minimum weight, minimum texture. However, these are not that. I tried it on once, it, it darkened to a shade two or three tones deeper than what you see in the bottle, so that was a shocker for me. The other thing was it felt quite heavy on the lips, so I am not sure what the point to this was. These are like slightly thicker than the NARS Power Mats, and I have to say, you know, in terms of performance, not too different from the regular liquid lipsticks. And these have more textures, they dry down than these. I am not too sure about this. I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. Peri Peri Ink Velvets. I bought three of these when I was in Korea, and these were one of the earlier versions of Korean matte lip inks. The only problem with these is they are staining as well. So um, while it's nice to have lightweight matte lip inks that do not transfer, I do not understand them um, having to create something that leaves a really deep dark stain on the lips because it's already non-transferring. Why do I want to leave a stain beneath? So tomorrow I can't switch to a lighter lip colour. I'm probably gonna just chuck these out. Let's try to make this quick. Um, Jouer, uh, a lot of people love this, the longwear lip creams from Jouer, but I find them really dry, really thick, and they emphasise all the creases in my lips, and when I smile, they crack, so I'm not sure what the hype is all about. 
I love the bottle, I love these shades, these shades are so beautiful and I just went crazy on Beautylish and just ordered a whole bunch of them but I do not like a single one of them so sadly these are going in the trash pile and they're kind of getting up there in age as well. Cosmic Queens is a Singaporean brand that launched not too long ago and they have jelly highlighters as well as a bunch of liquid lipstick shades. Now, I am not one to wear metallic liquid lipsticks but they have very smooth texture and these do take quite a while to dry down. I have to warn you about that. They will take maybe sometimes close to a minute to dry down and set completely but they do set and they're quite comfortable to wear. The colours are also quite nice and uh, they do still set slightly deeper than they appear in the tube like most matte liquid lipsticks do. I have so many in these similar colours that I probably am not going to be wearing them too often so I'm going to put the whole bunch in the maybe pile and then uh, I will probably pass off some of these to people around me. So they might have fun trying out this new brand. Okay, an easy one for me. Uemura. All the matte Supremes I am keeping because they are new and I love them. There's no way I'm throwing them out. And I did buy many of these myself, so this bunch is staying with me. They are like my precious and probably my favorite new lip formula uh, from 2018. As for the Lac Supremes, uh, they're kind of okay. I mean, it depends on colour, but they're not bad. I mean, some of the colours are just really, really beautiful. It's soft, uh, mauvey brown. They're corals. They are really good at doing corals. So, you know, that's one thing to look out for from Japanese brands. Now, the ones that come in the silver tube, these are old. They were sort of the first um, batch of the lip creams that Chu Uemura came out with a few years back so I don't even remember that I still have these and this has got to go. Make Up Face. This is a relatively new brand to Singapore and it's a Korean drugstore brand and they have only three shades of liquid lipstick. All three are pretty. Uh, it's a very comfortable formulation, they are non-setting. I am going to keep all three because I do like this formula a lot and it's pretty new. Now this came out in Etude House's latest collection, it's the Disney Pool collection uh, with Piglet. And this is a beautiful sheer peach stain that just looks so flattering on the lips. I love the colour and I would have bought the other two shades if not for the fact that um, after one day of wear my lips started peeling so I do have a slight uh, allergic reaction to something in the formula. If you don't though, I really recommend checking this out. It's a beautiful, beautiful matte tint and I really love the look of it. I'm gonna have to put this in the giveaway pile. My Jeffree Stars. Jeffree Star lipsticks. They are good. This is where I put up the same note that I do when mentioning Lime Crime makeup because, you know, like them or not, I do find that they make really good makeup. He does choose colours very well and the formula is pretty good. So I know there were mixed reviews that some of his colours were patchy and uneven or flaky and all that but I've never found that to be the case with any of these that I've tried. I do like his liquid lipstick formula and like I mentioned before, um, his are eye safe if you want to use these as uh, interesting coloured eyeliners. And I did buy these myself so I'm keeping them. Mm, sugar pill. This is my only liquid lipstick from Sugar Pill. It's metallic and it was a little bit of an impulse buy. I am going to put this in the giveaway pile because I have not worn it a single time. It's a beautiful raisin red, you know, sort of like burgundy red, but it's metallic and I don't really wear metallics. I do hear that the Sugar Pill liquid lipstick formula is really good though, so I think I should just give it away and not just use it once and waste it in case I don't like it. Now, uh, I think a lot of people have forgotten that Laura Mercier actually came out with these lip creams before the liquid lipsticks and it's a very nice creamy texture but they're not particularly long wearing, they're not particularly matte uh, so there's really nothing special about these so uh, I will probably keep a couple of these shades that I like the most but I'm gonna give the rest away. Oh, got a few stray Stila liquid lipsticks here as well. I do like the Stila formulation. A little on the dry side, but they perform very well and the colours are gorgeous. My favourite, favourite shade is Patina. Uh, this shade is the one that I do not love, Dolce. 
It's like one of those almost pearlescent but not quite pearlescent matte liquid lips and it's just not a flattering colour for me. So since it's quite old, I'm just going to chuck this. Ah, uh, Kat Von D, Kat Von D. Oh, I did receive a little locket with purchase a while back when I ordered something on Sephora. It's a little diamond lip which I think I'm going to just chuck away because it's kind of old and gross now. Kat Von D. Now, I have this really really old tube of Outlaw and this is not even the current packaging. This is the OG packaging from years ago. But I keep it for nostalgic reasons because this was the very first matte liquid lipstick that I bought in Sephora. The very first Sephora I ever went to in the US. It just kicked off my love for liquid lipstick. So. This is an OG formula. I love the Kat Von D formula because I find they are one of those kind of like lip inks, the original liquid lip ink. They are very light, they are not thick, they blend out very smoothly, they have great colours. I mean, I don't love every single shade I have here, of course. Um, a couple of these were sent as PR, but I do love most of these and I did buy most of them. This one is gonna have to go. It's just a very pale concealer beige colour and I guess you could use this to do an ombre lip effect, but I'm not gonna do that. So this color is going in the giveaway pile because it's pretty new. I am probably gonna keep most of the rest. Well, the orange is going in the giveaway pile as well. Requiem. Am I gonna keep Requiem? This is just an ashy lavender and not likely to be a shade that I'm gonna be wearing on its own. So this is going in the maybe pile. The rest, I'm going to keep it. We are done. Here is a duffel bag that's filled really with lots of stuff that I will be throwing out. And here is a bag that's about five layers deep uh, filled with the products that I will be passing on. Of course, here is what I will be keeping. It is still a ton of makeup, but come on. I am a beauty vlogger, I do a lot of tutorials, I do a lot of different looks, and I will forever have more makeup than I will ever finish using. So that's just the way it is. But you can see this also as an overview of the brands, and the colours, the textures that I currently like and still reach for. That brings me to the end of this D-Stash video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did get rid of a ton of product and this will fit slightly better into my stash because I'm running out of space. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up because that really helps me and I will see you guys in the next video.